Now, this reduces the amount of heating necessary in the heating section. Also, the settling time for incoming oil is decreased, and the outgoing oil is cooled to a more desirable storage temperature, minimizing vaporization and maintaining higher oil gravity. Preheated emulsion enters the vessel, splashes over a pan, and flows into the downcomer. Now, on its way down, the emulsion releases free gas due to the agitation created as it strikes the diverter plate. The gas leaves the treater through a mist extractor at the top of the vessel. As previously discussed, the mist extractor removes tiny liquid particles still entrained in the gas. After leaving the gas separation section through the downcomer, the emulsion enters the free water knockout section. Now here, most free water quickly settles out, and the remaining lighter liquids move upward through the water, which acts as a heated wash. As the treating process continues, the siphon system removes excess free water. The water section of vertical heater treaters occupies about 60% of the fluid column, leaving 40% for the oil and gas section. There are several things happening in the heating section. Here, the emulsion is heated as it passes around the fire tubes. Next. Fluids rise upward through the heat retainer baffles where water collects on the baffles and falls to the bottom free water knockout section. Released gases and vapor rise into the gas separation section. The heated emulsion in the settling section also releases gas. Now, this gas is vented back into the inlet chamber in order to maintain equalized pressure in every section of the vessel. Heat, chemicals, and gravity work together in the settling section, quickly breaking the emulsion. Finally, the clean oil flows out of the treater through a weir box. A weir is a dam-like structure which maintains liquids at a specified level. The oil flows down the outer shell of the heat exchanger, through the oil dump valve, and into a stock tank. The siphon system maintains the water level in the vessel. Water in the free water knockout section rises into the water siphon and flows over the adjustable siphon nipple. It then leaves the unit through the water dump valve. Since water seeks its own level, with just water in the treater, the water level on the water siphon will be equal to the water level inside the treater. So by changing the position of the siphon leg, or nipple, the water level can be changed to maintain the oil-water interface. Certain treating problems may require this interface level to be raised or lowered, but this adjustment isn't frequently needed. The added weight of the oil on top of the water in the treater causes the water level in the siphon to be higher than in the treater. However, the water level in the siphon will not reach the top of the oil level in the treater. To vary the height of the oil-water interface, the height of the pipe through which water enters the siphon must be changed. It depends on the design of the system. Lowering the siphon pipe lowers the oil-water interface, and raising the siphon pipe raises the interface. Some treaters use an adjustable siphon, or weir nipple, to change the water level. On these, a one-inch adjustment of the nipple will move the interface height about four or five inches. Heater treaters designed for cold climates often have the siphon line built inside. Now, on these, the siphon box is either outside for accessibility to the siphon nipple, or the nipple is adjusted from the top of the treater through a control mechanism. Another important part of the heater treater is its operating temperature. The lowest possible temperature to adequately treat the emulsion should be used. In warmer climates, heating may be necessary only in colder months. The relationship of chemicals to temperature must be considered. Now, usually, less chemical is required to treat a warm emulsion 